Mayor Kasim Reed's opening remarks at the Midtown Alliance annual meeting set the tone for a joyous evening. The Alliance is a group of business and community leaders who are committed to Midtown as a premier destination for commerce, culture, education, and living. Midtown has expanded. You know, there's now, it now moves westerly to what is now known as Midtown West. So the, the progress that's taken place just north of downtown is extending throughout the city. It's one of the greatest days uh, in the year for me to see the great progress that we've made, hear the updates from Kevin Green and the team there, and to just discuss and, and celebrate all the good things that we have going on in this part of town. Midtown Alliance has several programs and projects that take a comprehensive approach to urban planning and development. District 3 residents joined Councilman Ivory Lee Young Jr. to talk about what's happening on Atlanta's west side. Young convened the West Side Story meeting to give an update on neighborhood projects. Commissioner Tim Keene facilitated the session, which included reports from a number of partners, organizations, and city agencies. Councilman Young is pleased that these projects will have a significant impact on the entire district. Today is an opportunity for stakeholders and constituents to come out and to hear firsthand all of the things that we're doing to address the needs of existing families, existing residents, and the transformation of Atlanta's west side. Drew Nell Thomas came to make sure plans will focus on the needs of the older members of the community. We just want to make sure that the seniors can walk, can get public transportation that they need to continue what they need, the grocery stores, uh, we're glad to have a Walmart not too far away. Constituents joined Renew Atlanta and Councilmember Cleta Winslow to discuss Lawton Street resurfacing and gave feedback on the District 4 project. Emily Bertolotti lives on Lawton Street and is interested in bike lanes and parking. Want to hear more about the bicycle lane proposition on Lawton Street to find out what that means exactly, what that means for parking. And we're going to have some uh, bike lanes and the bike lanes will connect to the Beltline Trail, which is, uh, uh, which is on Lawton Street, and it will connect from Lawton Street down to White Street. So we're trying to give people another mode of transportation to think about, as opposed to the car. If you're going short distances in your neighborhood, consider walking and or, you know, biking. Renew Atlanta bond proceeds are used for a combination of citywide projects like street repairs, sidewalks, bridges, transit, pedestrian improvements, traffic lights, and upgrading public buildings. Councilmember Natalyn Archibung hosted a community meeting to discuss Imagine Memorial, a study of the Memorial Drive corridor that began in 2014 with help from Georgia Tech students who went door to door. Uh, went neighborhood by neighborhood gauging the interests and concerns of the, of the uh, constituents living along Memorial Drive and pull together a plan that was the byproduct of all of the community engagement. The meeting provided an overview of Memorial Drive from downtown to the city limits of Atlanta with maps of private development and public infrastructure such as speed and traffic improvements, intersection designs, and transit, bicycle, and pedestrian connectivity. You are surrounded by people who care about you and want to see you be successful. Councilwoman Archibung attended the Smart Micro Entrepreneur East Lake Trade Show. The program offers a free 14-week course to help small companies succeed by providing support and business training, mentorship, and early stage financing. So we are allowing them about a couple of hours to rotate through these tables and sit down with individual services that will fulfill needs for them so that they can have their questions answered and know who to contact. Low-cost loans are distributed to the top business ventures in the East Lake and Kirkwood communities. The program is a partnership with Emory University. The Burn Away Art Crush Auction was a chance to get some fabulous art from local artists. Burn Away is the voice for art in Atlanta and the South. Art Crush, it's uh... It's a focus on artists that the that Burnaway uh, has a crush on, or, or they, that they think is pretty exciting, or that they want to celebrate, and uh, it's just a really nice way to um, to to make a community and, and bring people together. 
The sixth annual auction had a prom theme and Councilman Hall served as honorary chair. It's one of the greatest times to support local artists, emergent artists, and people from all over our city and really even sometimes around the southeast and the country have been supportive of this local, um, really catalytic activity that we do. The event was at the city's new gallery 874. Councilman Hall was a guest speaker at Mercy Care's Black History Luncheon. This year's concept, a legacy of strength building a future of hope. Every year, Mercy Care celebrates Black History Month with a variety of activities. The clinic plays an important role in helping Atlanta's homeless population. Hall says Mercy Care has a long-standing commitment to doing work in the Old Fourth Ward. Councilman Hall was a panelist for a conversation among young professionals about technology and bilateral trade opportunities for Israel, India, and the U.S. Hall talked about his travel experiences on fellowship to Israel and India and the importance of the international community to Atlanta. There's been a traditional relationship between the Indian American community and the American Jewish community for a very long time in all parts of the country, more so in Atlanta. And uh, these two communities have worked together very closely and uh, tried to you know, further the economic, the political and the social agenda of the places they live in. The American Jewish community in partnership with the Indian community have come together to host an event, a dialogue about uh, community building, about technology, entrepreneurship, innovation, and in essence how these great communities, these great legacies that come from Israel and India have impacted Atlanta. The discussion was about strengthening ties and celebrating 25 years of India-Israel relations. The recent discovery of seven Earth-like planets just 40 light years outside of our solar system has scientists excited. We spoke with two Georgia State University professors about the findings. So it's like hitting the jackpot. So we had found planets orbiting the habitable zone in some stars and planets that were small enough that they might be like Earth. But a system where there's three of those, that's, that's, that's amazing. Belgian researchers working with the Trappist telescopes in Chile made the discovery of two planets last year. NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope subsequently found five more. Three of the seven are in the habitable zone orbiting this tiny ultra-cool dwarf. But what is a habitable zone? So the traditional habitable zone is the distance away from a star where you would have liquid water on the surface. That's right, liquid water. Only three places in our solar system have water that we know of. Jupiter's moon Europa, Saturn's moon Enceladus, and Earth. So is it possible that we have seven planets with water lurking right outside our solar system? That depends entirely on what the atmosphere of a planet is like. Because if you have too much atmosphere, you get Venus. If you have too little atmosphere, you get Mars. If you have just the right atmosphere, you get the Earth. To have a planet like ours that can sustain life means all the right ingredients need to be present in just the right amounts. But discovering these many planets orbiting a star much smaller than ours is giving scientists hope of eventually finding life outside of our planet. It's easier to find small planets orbiting a small star because a planet will be detected by moving in front of the star and hiding part of it. So let's go after the stars that are like that and see if those stars have planets. This is going to be a marathon and the gun just went off at the starting line. And if the gun just goes off, you've taken a few steps, it's going to take you a long time to get to that finish line. So while we're still far away from finding extraterrestrial life, we're a lot closer than we've ever been. For City Talk, I'm Troy Danicus.